So two main subjects that we're going to cover will be the effect of bird droppings on solar panels and also the effect of lichen on solar panels. So just a little history of, uh, of the company and myself. My background is not in electrical or farming, like maybe 90% of the people in the solar industry. I've run my own cleaning companies for um, 20 years, and so I, I come very much from a cleaning background. We can see that in 2011 through to 2013, hundreds of thousands of solar panels are sold all over the UK under the guise of them being self-cleaning. So everyone was told when the rain comes, it's going to clean all the solar panels, maintenance free, no cleaning needed. And time has gone on to prove that that's simply not the case. So as a company since 2012, we've been trying to get the message out there that solar panels are not self-cleaning and that they do need professional cleaning. There's also a huge window cleaning community, community out there that's got involved in solar panel cleaning, but often the window cleaners lack the health and safety knowledge needed in order to clean the solar panels safely. So we're a professional company. All of our employees are trained specifically for solar panel cleaning. So we cleaned as a company around 200 panels in 2012. Um, the growth of the company has seen us clean about 1.3 million panels in 2017. And as a total, we've cleaned about 3.2 million panels to date. So the growth of the company has been quite phenomenal. So these are supposedly self-cleaning solar panels. Um, as we can see, the rain has not done its job there. Um, solar panels do not self-clean. That is a basic premise that's now accepted by the solar industry. And we can see very clearly that the amount of sunlight that's going to be blocked out from the bird droppings there will have a definite detrimental effect on the output of those panels. This is a floating solar array, one that we were called out. Uh, can we do anything about that was the question from the client. Well, yes is the answer, we can. But 23,000 floating solar panels to clean is no easy feat and so obviously that costs uh, a lot of time and time is money and the O&M budgets often do not contain um, the money needed. So this self-cleaning myth pervaded the whole industry and we as a company have spent years trying to break that down. The UK different uh, climate is different to places like Spain and California. There's a lot of solar in those places. You've got a drier, sunnier climate, so you don't see algal growth and you don't see lichen growing on solar panels. But here in the UK, we have a damper climate and, uh, and the warmth combined with the dampness really is a bed of growth for both algae and lichen. So this problem was not anticipated by O&M providers when the initial contracts were drawn up to maintain a solar array. There's nobody that anticipated that solar panels would find themselves in this sort of state if they weren't cleaned. Um, so it's created big problems regarding budget and how physically can we remove lichen from solar panels. It's not easy at all. We as an industry expected bird droppings to be landing on solar panels and steps were taken to sort of, you know, protect them from the birds, be it through audible devices or wind-driven devices or netting above on certain roofs. And so the bird dropping um, problem was certainly anticipated, but lichen growth certainly was not. So we've mentioned that the O&M budget didn't contain the money. There was a finite amount of money within the O&M budget. It didn't allow for things like cleaning in the early days. So it wasn't part of the scope. But when the second round of O&M contracts were coming around, it was discussed, well, is cleaning needed? Yes, maybe it is. But nobody really had a handle on how often it would need to be cleaned a solar array, nor how long it would take. And so therefore, they limited their budget as part of their scope. So as a result, we can see the assets then, they gradually declined in their output and they began to underperform. This was a result of many reasons really, but cleaning was one of those areas. And people underestimated the damaging effect that shading from bird droppings and lichen um, would have. So a general rule of thumb, as we know, is that shading created by debris of any sort is the enemy of a solar panel. Any form of shading will reduce your output and it's going to create hot spotting. So here we've got a thermal image of exactly the same solar panel. It's an instantaneous image, so when we take a photo of the panel, we've also captured 
a thermal image of that panel. And we can see where we've got the red and the yellow and particularly the white areas. That's where that solar panel is overheating. And everywhere that there's a bird drop and we've got that start of the overheating process. And we can see very clearly in the centre of the image where we've got a failed cell, an overheating cell. And that may well be as a result of uh, bird droppings being on there for an amount of time and it's caused that failure within the module. So bird droppings we can deal with. Elbow grease and the right sort of brushes and, and, and treatments and, and we can get through the bird droppings. But lichen on the other hand is a lot more difficult to deal with. Why is that? Well, scientifically and microscopically, when we look at how lichen grows, it's very much like a limpet on a rock. It attaches itself in a very firm way. Lichen grows at a microscopic level, and when all those fibers grow and join together, it becomes visible to the human eye. So we can see that it's, it grows in the pits of the glass. So glass to touch is very smooth. Put the glass under a microscope, and it's very, very rough. And that's where the lichen grows. It grows in those pits and it spreads to the surface, so it's very, very difficult to remove. Um, lichen can only grow where algae grows, so if you keep the algal growth down on the solar panels, you're not allowing the lichen to grow. So that's how um, we know that the lichen grows. So the wrong methods of lichen, um, of removing the lichen and the bird droppings, they can create damage to the panels as we see here. So somebody's gone at the solar panels trying to scrape something off there with some sort of scraper and they've scratched quite badly um, the glass on the solar panels. And if you go at bird droppings and lichen with scrapers, it's very likely you're gonna be left with an end result that looks like that. There are lichen removing chemicals around on the UK market, particularly they're used in the roof cleaning sectors and in the flat surface sectors. Uh, through one of my other companies, we deal with that. So we are able to remove lichen, but with those particular chemicals, we're going to invalidate the warranty. So is there a chemical available that can safely remove lichen from solar panels that's been met by the approval of warranties? Um, well, there is. When you're looking for a solution, you need to find a company who's got the best practice guidelines. So in December 2018, there will be version three of a document which is going to be released by the Solar Power um, Europe. And that's going to be compiled from all facets of O&M. And part of that will be solar panel cleaning. There will be guidelines contained within there as to what you should look for when you're looking for a solar panel cleaning company. When you think you've found your company, you need to make sure that they've got the capability to remove lichen from the solar panels. It's one thing being able to remove bird droppings from solar panels, it's quite another though, being able to remove lichen. Regular solar panel cleaning will not allow lichen to accumulate in the first place. We mentioned that algal growth is the only form of allowing lichen growth. So if you keep the algae down, the lichen can't grow. The best way to keep the algae down is through regular cleaning of the solar panels. So more guidance when choosing a solar panel cleaning provider. They should have a proven track record. There's lots of new entrants into the solar panel cleaning market. Um, there's umpteen companies out there now that you can choose from. Who should you choose? Ideally someone with a proven track record. You should also choose um, a solar panel cleaning company that's going to work within the confines of the warranty of the solar panels themselves. There are lots of companies out there pressure washing solar panels, using chemicals on solar panels, not protecting their staff from electrocution while they're cleaning solar panels. All of those are companies to steer clear from. They do proliferate, unfortunately, the UK market, so you need to make sure that you're doing your due diligence when you're, doing, uh, when you're choosing a solar panel cleaning provider. And you need to make sure that they're going to work within the warranty of the original panel manufacturers. Fair and transparent pricing. 
that's another issue. It's okay going into a site and pricing to clean a site. If those guys turn up on site and it's covered in bird droppings, they may well clear, clear the bird droppings for you and then present you with an increased bill. Well, it was worse than we thought, so we need you to pay more money. Well, again, you need to make sure that your panel cleaning company is not going to do that for you. So with over 3.2 million solar panels cleaned to date, Clean Solar Solutions have the experience that you need in order to tackle many different problems. We clean ground mounted, roof mounted, and indeed floating solar arrays like the one that we saw at the beginning of the presentation. We also have a lichen removal chemical, which has been approved by a good number of solar panel manufacturers, and we continue to gain new approvals from manufacturers for that chemical. It's important to know that lichen removal is a very expensive process. It's time consuming. We will happily take your money from you, but ideally we would not like you to find yourselves in the position where you've got to spend an absolute fortune getting rid of lichen. It's much better that you maintain a regular program of cleaning, maintain the efficiency of the panels, and therefore you don't ever need our lichen removal service. So bird droppings and lichen are the enemy of solar panels. They can create permanent damage to your panels. They can be proved to be catastrophic to a system. Specialist removal is available, but it can be expensive. So the key to maintaining a good array is regular cleaning in order to maintain, maintain the efficiency. And then finally choose a solar cleaning company that's got a proven track record in that field. So the solution is clear. And that's all folks on the subject of removing bird droppings and lichen from solar panels. But we are glad to be here at the um, All Ed Energy Show here in Glasgow. We do have one more announcement, and that's the Clean Solar Solutions as of today are launching all of our services in Ireland. So that puts us on the map in three different countries. That's all of the UK. We already operate in Australia. And as of today, we're operating our full O&M spectrum across the whole of Ireland. If anyone has any questions, I'll be glad to hear them.